On this episode of Black Tie Kitchen, I'm going to show you how to elevate your pie game to the next level. No, I'm not talking about the filling, I'm talking about the crust. So what exactly we're going to need? Eight ounces of all-purpose flour, 225 grams. A half ounce, 15 grams of sugar. One teaspoon, four grams of kosher salt. If you're using table salt, cut the volume in half, therefore half a teaspoon. Two sticks of butter. On my knees. And four ounces of cold water. Oh, she's a beaut. The enemy of a good pie crust is heat. So make sure you put your ingredients, your mixing bowls, everything in the fridge, including your salt, your flour, even your sugar. If you need to keep your surface cold, what I recommend is you get a couple freezer bags. The frozen vegetables works just as well. Just put them on the cutting board and let them sit there for a while. Now when I say everything, I mean everything, including a rolling pin. So we have our ingredients here, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the butter. Now, the butter, remember, you gotta keep it cold because this is the key to everything here. Make sure your house is cold, your cutting board is cold, everything. Why is this paper so difficult? I'm actually gonna get a piece of parchment paper. Pain in the ass to clean. Just one stick. There is the other stick. So first we're gonna do is we're gonna cut our butter lengthwise. And you'll see why in a second. And then here we're gonna cut lengthwise again. Lengthwise again. So now we can actually stack these, almost look like cheese sticks, and cut our half inch cubes like this. And as you can see, since it sticks to the knife, you almost have a cutting guide for same size pieces of butter. It's like a big old butter wall. We're gonna put this aside for the time being for a quick second here. As we bring in our dry ingredients, our bowl has been in the fridge, just like everything else. Everything's gotta stay cold. It'll help you trust me. It cuts, the amount of time you have is very minimal. Just work fast, work fast and efficiently. That's my sugar, this is my salt. I'm gonna add the flour. Put it all in there. Trust the little whisk. Let's make sure it's all mixed together. I think that's good enough. Now we're gonna add the butter. Now, we're basically gonna make it look like it's a bunch of cornflakes inside and you have to work quick. Do not use the palm of your hands, use your fingertips. The palm of your hands transfers a lot of heat. You just wanna use the fingertips. We're just gonna kinda of drop our butter in here and work it. Work it like it's a music video. Work fast, just basically mashing it together with your fingers. You almost just can take one and just smash it with your fingers. It's one of the best ways to do it. Just remember, don't use your palm of your hands because the palm of your hands are very hot. So you see here, it's kind of got this consistency. Just basically mashing it together. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add the cold water. So what I have here is a wooden spoon. You can use a silicone uh, spatula, but I find it doesn't have the right oomph to really get this mixed in. So we're just gonna add this amount of water here, and we're just gonna mash it, basically build the ball up against the bowl of the, against the bowl. This is a very classic recipe for pie crust. It's two to one flour to water, one to one flour to butter. So if you have a pound of flour, you're gonna use a pound of butter. If you have a pound of flour, you're gonna use half a pound of water. It's really good for remembering the dimensions that you use. Very simple. So you're basically gonna try and mix this well until it becomes like a big, massive ball. If it's a little bit too dry, just add a couple drops of water. If it's too wet, just add a little bit of flour to it. You want it to be sticky, but not too sticky. See, it's sticky, but it's not too sticky. 
So you see, this is exactly what we want. We have our ball of dough here. And we're gonna put it in the fridge about 30 minutes and let it cool off, make sure it's right where we need it to be. You want it to be hard, but you don't want it to be so hard that when you roll it out, the edges basically uh, crack. So we're gonna put this in saran wrap over here. Nice airtight ball. <laughs> Boom. Just gonna make this nice and tight. 30 minutes in the fridge and we'll be back. So we have our dough from the fridge. It's still cold, but it's still malleable. What we're gonna do is we're gonna roll it out with a rolling pin. Now I'm actually gonna roll it out on the counter. You can roll it on your cutting board. That's what you have if you don't have the space. Ideally, you wanna have a piece of marble, but I don't honestly who has a piece of marble in their house. This is the pie container that we will be using to bake it in. It's a glass composite type of thing, Pyrex sort of thing. This is a nine and a half inch, nine, nine and a half inch is what we're aiming for. This conducts heat really well. It's preferred over the metal stuff, especially in the 99 cent store stuff that you use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll this out on our cutting board or my countertops. And we're gonna basically literally flour our cutting board. Countertop, countertop, not cutting board. Now what we're gonna do is as we roll it out, we're gonna keep checking to make sure that it's not sticking. We also wanna flour our rolling pin so it doesn't stick to this. I'm just gonna roll it out. We're gonna try and roll it out into a square. Up here. So this year what we're going to do here is we're going to fold it towards the center, fold the other half, fold this like a book, we're going to fold this in half. Now what we're going to do here, cut this in half, we're using a bench scraper, if you don't have a bench scraper, a knife works just as well. This is for our two pies here. Should be pretty equal, but mine is not so much. Now we can roll one out and freeze the other, we can put them both in the fridge, because since they've both been in the fridge, they're both cool, we can use both of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll this one out to a circle for our pie, and the other one we're going to roll out into a square for our lattice that we will use for the top side of our, our pie. So in the meantime, while I roll this one out, I'm actually going to put this one into the fridge so that it remains nice and cool. So this is about a nine and a half inch. You want to get it to be about with an inch overlap over the sides, so probably between anywhere between 11 and 12. So like I said, remember, keep watching, making sure that you don't need to add any flour to the bottom so it doesn't stick. Flour your rolling pan. If you don't have a rolling pin, feel free to use a wine bottle. I've done that before with very good success, especially since you have to empty the wine bottle first. So the way to gauge if you're cross is big enough is you just basically eyeball it with your pie container. This one is almost getting there. Dust this a little bit more. As you can see it, I can handle it. It's not sticking to anything. That's what you want. You don't want to stretch your pie crust when you put it in the container because it will shrink when it bakes. Just make sure you get it right on this side. Perfect. So here we go. want to drop it in to this, this shell here. As you can see, it's good. So what we're going to do is we're going to snip off the sides about an inch. Now, typically, if you're not doing a double-sided pie or keep forgetting it, where you have the lattice on top, you would just crimp the edge. But we are, so we're going to leave it for now. If you don't have scissors or shears, just go ahead and use a knife. So if this wasn't probably what we would do, if this wasn't the whole side we would do is we'd be here, we'd basically crimp it. All sorts of designs and stuff. But since we're gonna do a lattice, we need 
this like this. I'm actually gonna roll out the lattice. I'm gonna put this back in the fridge in the meantime. You can actually keep this dough in the freezer for four weeks or you can also bake this to do your blind baked pie crust if you're really wet, mushy crust, you want it to keep it crusty or crusty. Basically bake it at like 350 for 20 minutes and kind of half bake it before you put the filling in. So this right now is good. This is exactly where we want, but we're gonna roll out our lads and we're actually gonna get a pie filling. I'm gonna cover this with saran wrap, put it back to the fridge. Now keep in mind, if you get any parts of your dough where it actually spreads or separates, you can use these pieces that we've cut off, like so. You can use any of these pieces and actually just patch it up and you'll be good to go. So now onto the lattice. We still have these bits here. We can actually use these again. Should flower this here before we start. Boom. Now for this, since we're gonna make the lattice, we basically want a square. Now there's flour everywhere. So I'm gonna flour the cutting board. I'm gonna flour my rolling pin again. I'm just gonna try and roll out the square. We're basically looking for a nine by 11 square. That's about right. do with this is we're going to get a cookie sheet and line it with parchment paper. And what this is going to do is basically eliminate any unsavory flavors or savory flavors that we might have on the cookie sheet. You see it here on our cutting board. Perfect flour. We're going to cover with saran wrap so it doesn't get anything else in the fridge. We're going to let it cool for at least 30 minutes before we put it on our pie crust. And that basically it. You have your pie crust and you have your dough for your lattice. If you don't know what a lattice is, it's basically the crisscrossing stuff you see on the top. The fancy stuff you see on pies. There you have it. That is basically it. That's literally all you need for a pie dough. It's literally just mixing water, flour, and butter some salt, a little bit of sugar, and that's it. And I guarantee you, even if you screw this up, it's still gonna be a thousand times better than that store-bought stuff from the freezer aisle. The hardest part, honestly, is keeping your ingredients and your surface cold, especially in a hot kitchen where if you're cooking for Thanksgiving or Christmas or some other big holiday and you have just everything going off in the stove and kids yelling and all sorts of stuff, it's honestly the hardest part. One tip I have there is just make the dough before, stick it in the freezer, as I said, it'll hold up to four weeks, just defrost in the fridge the night before and take it out a little bit before you go to use it. Let it get to room temperature, but not too room temperature, just malleable enough. And then you can just use it for however it is you're gonna use it. Pies or double lattice, double-sided, blind baked, all that stuff. Really, really good. My name is Dennis with Black Tie Kitchen. Check out the ingredients below if you like this video. Hit that like button and subscribe. Until next time, leave your comments below. Let me know how you make your pie crust. Remember, cook, but you can't clean it. Video. So what is it we're going to need in terms of ingredients? <laughs> Four ounces of cold water. Oh, that was a bad idea. Oh. <laughs>